Uh, roll call, please. Chair Ray Dalton. Yes. Vice Chair Matt Schuller. Here. Dr. Ray Dalton. Present. Kathy Pinkus. Here. 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 Kath
No, no two separate entities. Yeah. Two separate okay. entities. So these work. three, those two are habitat for me and the heat. These three will be for habitat. Those other two don't. The basically. other two are for neighbor works. Oh, then we're neighbor. Yeah. Like I said, they're working with the um, bridges program mm -hmm. out of the high school. They mm -hmm. do, they've done that for gosh, the last few years. And then as long as we're here, there's one the foundations up on uh, like a street away from me and then um, Harold. And Harold Lemans Construction is working on that right now. That's a private bill. That's a private, that's a private one. Yep, yep, that's a private bill. But not a habitat. No. Nope. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's just See. someone who purchased it. Go uh, so, yep. I'll have to inform the people that told me it's a habitat one. Someone told them it was. No, nope. no, nope. that's a private bill. Someone blew it all about it. So. Yep, nope, that was. I didn't really know how to handle it. It's better than an empty lot. Yep. And oh, it's yeah. a house. Nope. Well, I mean, and habitat homes are, I mean, it's a homeowner. They buy the house, they pay a mortgage, they pay taxes. It's yep. just, you know what I mean? It's like having a new homeowner in the neighborhood. It's a dream that I would love to bring to the district and make it better. I mean, honestly, I mean, with the, mm -hmm. all these years, I mean, it just shows, you know, what the flood stuff that we can't control right. makes quite the difference, you know. Right. So I noticed, and I mean, it looks like there's several other places. I mean, if you're going Christmas shopping, you know, there's quite a few lots in my district that are open like that one on is it Harvey? It's right on Webster. It's a and there's two of them on, on Harvey that are um vacant right now. One of them's a little bit narrow. Yeah, that one and so um when we've had uh when our planners have looked at it and gone over a few things, it's been that's the only hiccup that's been with that one. It's deep, it's just been a little bit narrow. Is that the one that is then up the block, not on the edge. Yes. That's got like a driveway yes. leading in. Yep. So that would have to be yes. changed. Yeah. And only yeah. one garage for them? Is that? Yeah. yeah. That's, all the, that's the only, that's the requirement is you have to have at least a single stall garage. Well, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, but probably no room for more. If, and and for any. There could be room. I, go ahead. I mean, is it to be cost down? Does it? I don't think Habitat allows it. No, it's in city ordinance. They, for a long time, they built without garages. Right. And we changed the ordinance that requires a single stall garage yes. now. Um, so that's why all builds minimally have to have a single stall garage. But they could, I mean, they could have one or two. two. They okay. Could, yeah. I thought this could, that was like an overlayer at Habitat said, okay, you can have a single stall. So they all make that. Because yeah. I do remember yeah. right away. I mean, that's right. this. And this is a planning option, right? So we don't know exactly what they're going to look like. This is a development agreement. So we would be transferring these lots to Habitat. I know this is the one year development agreement. Oh, they're actually going to buy them. Okay. Yep. So yep. would all three houses be built in one in the, over the next That's year? their plan. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, they are going to be. They'd like to, they'd like to they're, I think, starting their Habitat Homestead project. They'll be starting that in the spring and we did some houses to keep them going. Wow. Right, we're at the keep them going. Us is beautiful. <laughs> and I think that the versus one bedroom to two bedroom too, because they're they're keeping these more affordable. These are affordable too. Right. So you know, you add that two stall garage adds that more expense on there. So it may it may change that value as of affordability of what they can do. So yeah. They do great, right? I think they, they do, do great. Yep. Excellent furniture. So this is just yep. is open to the public. Any anyone to buy these, or is there people that qualify for these? People homes? qualify. They have to yep. go through habitat. They have spot through habitat for humanity for a home. So they pay for the bill. The city, the RDA, it owns everything up to the sale. No. We we transfer the property to them, and they start their contractors build. So you own the property. Yeah. We do now, sure. but we will be as soon as we have approval of them and they pay for their purchase price, then we transfer the deed directly to Habitat. So that's what this is for to pass these prices yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. And then once they have the, <clears throat> their ownership, then they can start building on it. Because as long as they're under RDA, we don't have the agreement to be for them to be able to break ground. Okay, and then what what funds the building of it then? Is that the habitat for, for ha habitat, habitat has investors? Okay. That uses their own yeah. funding. 
Sometimes they'll apply to the redevelopment authority to use some home dollars or some federal funding um, to help with affordable housing purposes. I don't think that may come, come back at this point. We don't we have, have they don't have those numbers at this point, but it, they may come back like next month and that could be a home request. We have funding actually set yeah. aside for that type of housing yeah. to help build single family homes. I learned something every time I come here. It's a it's a great program. No, I mean this is you know, like I'm just gonna give a little to me. I know what I say, and you know, everyone like, where do you live? You know, this was the door to door a couple of years ago. Or northeast side of Green Bay, and they're like, ooh, that's rough part of town. And I'm like, yeah, but remember when they used to say that about Broadway? And mm -hmm. then they go, Wow, really? I'm like, it takes a long time, but you gotta start somewhere. And I'm lifting this thing. What is our I can think of I can't even think of all the properties. There's so many in that district now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, by the, the Eagles Club and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't we're talking about the agenda here, but we right. try to cover it off. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, question for Thomas in regards to the, the agenda item. If not, if approved. Yeah. No I'll second the motion. A, a motion by the owner of the panel. Second by Matt. Questions or comments in regards to the motion? If not, all of the favor of motion, please sing by saying aye. 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 Excellent. Well, Gary. Four questions. Oh, yeah, please go ahead. So, the next step of this is going to the council under. No. Okay. Or not just for the approval under some other. Well, it was already on land, so, okay. you know, just handled here. Right. Yeah. Not everything goes to council from RDA. We're kind of independent. In a lot of ways. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, number nine. Consideration of possible action to approve a one year lease to GNC development for parking located at 314 North Chestnut Avenue, Parcel 5 599. Okay. So this is actually 314 North Chestnut Avenue, which is actually right next to Glass Nickel. They, in the past, have <clears throat> had had exclusive use of 11 business parking spaces and non-exclusive use uh, for uh, of the entire parking lot. The rental rate for the 11 um, parking spaces was set at $25 per parking space per month or equal to $275. Um, Glass Nickel currently does maintain the parking lot and sidewalk with the, um, and their current rent had them being able to reduce the rent at $112 per snow event. Um, I did there, they did put in a request to renew their lease for another year. During that time, I also reached out to find out what our, um, cause we haven't written any, um, <coughs> rental rates or anything on there. And we have had some other phone calls of people who were interested in asking about other lots that the RDA owns and what we would charge for, um, parking spaces. So I did reach out to our city's parking division and compared their 2024 um, rental rate is going to be set at $50.20 per stall per month plus tax. So at the $25, I think we've been pretty lenient. Um, staff has discussed this and what we're looking at at this point are recommending is that we raise it to $35 per, per parking space but that um, Glass Nickel still maintain their own property, um, but we wouldn't be kicking back that extra um, money um, for each snow event. Now, the snow event situation came in when parks took over for um, the service that we had. And at that time, I had spoken to um, the people who represent Glass Nickel and said, you know, Parks can take over, however, they may not always be there for nights and weekends. That became an issue, and that's where we came into the decision with the $112 per snow event, and that was based on the average that Lizer was charging us. Okay. And it's strictly a one-year lease, so we could uh, look at it again a year from now. We can look at it a year from now. We do have a 30-day clause in there for either party. If um, we came into a development with, in writing, we could withdrawal agreement as well as that. Um, now, um, last nickel is here, so we need to open up the table if there's any questions or comments. Yeah. 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 Ye
Motion open the floor. Second. Second to open the floor. All in favor, say aye. 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 So we've been what renting this for 10 years. Mm -hmm. okay. You need to take your name and your Tim, I'm Tim Nicholson. Okay. And I'm talking about the glass nickel parking lot here. Well, half of it. Um, so I went there this morning and I looked, it was like 80% full. Um and I think it was a great arrangement when you guys were plowing and we were paying the rent. I, it seemed fair. Uh, the problem came when the it wasn't getting plowed on the weekends. <laughs> right. We're a restaurant, so we need you know to have a plow parking lot on the weekends. And also, I just noticed there's a handicap spot there. I mean, you wouldn't want somebody pulling into that handicap spot in a foot snowstorm um, and not having it plowed. So we agreed last year to plow it and maintain it, and we had no idea what it was going to cost or how it was going to go. It snowed a lot last year, so mm -hmm. I think you know we ended up paying six or seven thousand total to rent a parking lot, and in the past it was three thousand. So um, we just, I just came to see if we could come to you know an equitable uh, agreement for next for this coming year and maybe even the year. The year coming up or you know the next year um so it looks like glass nickel has you know one half of the parking lot and the other half is the city it's the six six uh stalls for apartments above you know four above our building and two above the home group and then it looks like there's five or six just regular parking parking so, you know, what I'm going to suggest is we maintain the parking lot so as I get a, a, you know, salted, safe parking lot for our customers. And um, since we only owe half, how about we just maintain the parking lot and we don't pay any rent? Now, that's just one idea. <laughs> Another idea would be to, um, you know, we, you have parks plow during the week. And then we have our guy coming in the weekend. We submit a bill, but I mean, from our last bill, it, it does seem like the rent would it would be, it's pretty much a wash if we maintain it, you know, opposed to paying rent. And I would also throw on the money from last year if we were just going to make it even Steven, you know, I we wouldn't need any money for last year, you know, the whatever it was, the fifteen hundred or if we just made it simple like that for this year and then maybe next year we get I mean if, if if you guys could figure out plowing on the weekends we would just pay the rate no problem you know what I mean but seeing that handicap spot I was like that looks like a liability to me you know so I don't for glass nickel or for the city you know we it was unplowed and unsalted and someone came in there so so technically you guys have 11 um, parking spaces and four tenant parking spaces. But we're not responsible for, for the, the tenant, tenant ones. Right. right, right. You guys you guys are not paying for that one. Um, hope, I'm just going to give you guys some numbers. Um, during these, this last year, based on the number of snow events, um, they did not reduce their rent during the year for it. They have um, given me what they cost and and. Based on those, if I get a copy of the invoices that were provided um, from their vendor, based on the $112 per snow event, their reimbursement credit for this last um, year would be $1,542. At this point, they're paying $275 a month for rent. And with the increase, there would be a, uh, it would be $385. So you're really talking about like a, what is that? $110 increase. <laughs> well, it was pretty nice to have our guys follow it on weekends. No, we don't, they, they don't follow it, we don't. They used to, but now-, now We don't, that's because we had a different service. We had a private service that did our, um, maintained our lots. Yeah, so my suggestion is since we're taking care of half, it's basically spit right down the middle. We're taking care of half the city's parking lot and we're taking care of ours. So, you know. 
we maintain it, or can we just call it good for a year? Since the part of the parking lot to the north is uh, gonna be, can I walk out there and show it? Oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> we maintain the whole lot. <laughs> yep, we maintain the whole lot. So this is um this is the last nickel here, okay. and then there's one handicap spot here, and then there's two uh, parking spots here for a homebrew, the people, the tenants that live above it, mm -hmm. and four for glass nickel that live above our building. And then these are just common use. So this is basically city, and that's glass nickel. And then, yeah, so we maintain the whole parking. Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. um, so the city owns these parking lots. It's not the glass nickel that owns them or the other business, correct? Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't we be plowing whenever it snows? Even on the weekends, if they are parking lots that people use. And maybe that's just a really dumb question, but why wouldn't we plow them? So this is Kathy, this is like a one-off for us. Normally we don't plow lots because we don't have people using our lots that are owned by the redevelopment authority. So this is an odd situation for us. And when we changed over from private um, over to park staff, because our costs were so high to maintain all of our REA lots, we changed over to park staff that actually maintain that for us now. Um, they would have to come in, you know, for overtime or weekends and they don't, they're like, that's not part of the deal. So we don't have those weekend services, which is why we work this special deal out with the, with the business owner, because we don't have, right. we don't have a service to do that on weekends and nights. Our I, I just, I can um, definitely relate though, to the cost of, of plowing a parking lot um, from the YWCA CEO. So whatever we can do to help, would be great. Why, why do we have parks and not BBW? Well, they would do. Uh, that's weird. We have the one. We work with parks. The park. Okay. And I'm just saying, you guys don't have to worry about it at all. We'll take care of it. <laughs> I'll even do a spring and fall cleanup. Straighten the signs up. <laughs> And keep your rent the same that it is now. Well, no, I mean what I'm saying is that we're we're plowing the half of the cities, so that we're not going to charge the city anything for plowing their lot. So it's just even Stephen, you know, you don't have to think about it. We're paying for it. We paid thirty four hundred last, which is basically the rent you were getting. But the other half is the four units you have for your tenants above. Right, but that's the city's responsibility. The Not from the lease that we had. The homebrew last year. What happened with the homebrew? I mean, we're just paying for that. So no, you're you're only paying. Those four are free. Yeah, yeah. You're you're only paying for the eleven that's on this. Right, day. right. Homebrew. Yeah, yeah. I know, but the city is responsible for those to plow or maintain them or whatever. Right. But, I get what you mean. Yeah. So we're we're okay. taking care of the parking lot. Half half is which is, is the city's and half is ours. So I'm saying, why would we pay rent and take care of the city's responsibility? You know, see what I'm saying? Seems like they should get some kind of recompense for taking care of, but uh, not these. But what would be the what would be that? I think that would be at hundred total dollars for snow event. This is a million dollars. Can we put this off for yeah, can, can we hold you, this and then just like a year out? Kind of wide open. I think you guys have to work well, their their lease expires December thirty first. So if we have a snow event prior to, then we're going to be responsible for it. And but that's there, there's no other option. I mean, well, let, we can figure something out, right? It's like pretty close. And well, the existing agreement doesn't really, it's the cost of six or seven thousand dollars last year to take care of. Um, well, we can, can't we just extend it through the end of January? 
moving forward till we figure it out and bring it back to the RDA in January? I know, I know what I mean. It, well, it's a, it's a seven hour drive for me. I it's can't <laughs> we just can come remotely? Can I know? But I like you <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I mean, can can we just come up with a number and we just write one check every year? No, I live now. I live in in Baroba, which is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I, I guess I'm going to present this to staff. It, it, we do we keep it at the twenty five dollars, but there's still no reimbursement for. It. That's still two seventy five a month. That's what they were paying before. I know that they're take, maintaining their own part, but we're not raising the rent for this next year. Okay. Well, what about us uh, maintaining the city part? The the eleven stalls opposite of us, isn't there? Is that that was just a reduced. You see what I'm saying? These eleven stalls, right, right, but, are not our responsibility, but we're right. maintaining them, right? But what and you we're paying rent, right? You yeah, know you're paying rent, but if you were in other parts of the city, you would be paying fifty dollars and twelve cents, fifty twenty plus tax, right. fifty twenty plus tax. I would gladly pay that, and not have to worry about the plowing. You know, what, see what I'm saying? We could just pay that, and you guys plow on the weekend. See, it's a, it's a wide as a numbers thing, it's a wash. It's like we take care of it, or you got to pay some guys overtime to take care of it. It's like the money is basically right down the middle. So if we make an agreement where we maintain the entire parking lot, it's it's basically it's it's you know we can pay you ten dollars. You know, with with the funds we we get from the rent, what what where does that go? What we do with that? Pay the plow. Yeah. No, no. I, our our the rent back in the maintenance back into maintenance mm -hmm. because we do you'd be plowing but we also we still maintain the lot. I mean, there's nothing be, there. There's some signs. Well, early maintenance is still removable earlier, right? Yeah, and the signs. Chairman Delvo. Yes, yes. Uh, Alder Johnson here. Can I just make a suggestion? At thirty-five dollars a stall times eleven spots, you're four thousand six hundred twenty dollars a year. Staff deals with decisions much bigger than this every single day. I'd just like to suggest that you refer it back to staff, let them come up in an agreement that both parties agree to, and call it a day. That's what we're talking about here. It's, it's too wide open. I think we need to hammer this out a little bit, and we'll have to do it through telephone, unfortunately. We'll have to do, they'll work through you. Okay, and, and just do it, but of course. Yeah, but I think what Alder Johnson is. Suggested, which is a good one, is just to empower staff to come. Yeah, back. okay, right. excellent. That, I think it's a better way. Right, then that uh, they don't have to come back to another meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At least with terms to be determined between parties. Mm -hmm. Chairman, the motion would be to to approve a one year lease with <coughs> terms to be determined uh, by the parties. Debbie, you got that? Do you agree, agree with that motion? I do. So moved. <laughs> uh, motion by Debbie, second by Oliver Scandal. All in favor of the motion, something by the AI. Aye. 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 Just one. Aye. Two more Thank you. Thanks for hearing me out. I appreciate it. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. It's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Motion to close the floor. Yeah. And a second by the so Second. All in favor of the AI. Aye. 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 Now, now the motion by Debbie, which is with uh, the yes. 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 all, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Vote is motion carried. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good to say at least. Um, back to number one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is exciting. Consideration. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, you don't, we don't see this every day. Yeah, consideration of possible action to approve the sale of property at 100 West Walnut Street, parcel 4 180 to Logan Rankin for $1,027,500, including a right of first refusal. Uh, a question, real quick, a right of first refusal. Is it uh, just for a right of, for the land or the entire project? Entire project? Entire project. Yeah. Good, good. That's what I thought. So, this is um, Rivers Edge Apartments. You recall the RDA is on the land that we need there. Dare I say this is one that was made before I even started working for the city. <laughs> Get so, out. I don't believe what? it. It's early 80s, I'm just saying. <laughs> so um, so we've had this land lease for a long time, and um there's been a transfer of the Mons Corporation over forever, and Logan Lincoln bought this property. You may recall I came to the RDA and asked to negotiate for the sale outside of the terms of the yeah. lease, which was every five years. We've been working on this. 
We've gone through the appraisal process. We appra the appraisal came to me in the middle at the 1 million 27, and then he's willing to offer us the first part of refusal. You know, he's aware that this apartment complex is not the highest and best use for the site, and he's put a lot of money into it, picked it up, that's great, but when you talk about land, this is prime downtown land, so yes. we would just like the first right of refusal at okay. some point that he sells, so we can maybe do something with it at that point. He agreed to that, and so that would be another recommendation that we sell this property. Okay. Having apartments isn't Good use. It is a good use, but it's like two stories there. I'd like to see 10. Ah, me too. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, and he's in, and they're nice apartments and he's put a lot of money into them. He's right. a good landlord. He's doing a lot of really good stuff. He's going to be very as well. Um, but still, an utilization of the site when you look at prime waterfront. Right, right. right. That's so, that's so <laughs> well. <laughs> that's Cheryl, how did we come to the valuation on the land? Two appraisals. Okay. Um, we got one, we got one. Mm -hmm. So we've had two outside third parties look at this. Yeah. We've got a high and low, but yep. kind of just yep. met in the middle. Oh, well, was walking okay. with 985. This was one on 70. We just met in the middle. Okay. Yeah. And I forget to have a property that not on the land. What, what well, and, that, and certainly it's a better, I mean, it, it's a better deal for him to keep a land lease in place, but his his lenders <laughs> are like, hmm, yeah, right. We don't like this very much. So. Absolutely. I, I make the motion then um, to approve the sale um, with including a right of first refusal for $1,077,500. And second. And Mr. Kelly, you want to make a motion? If not, all those in favor of the motion, signify aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Nice job, Charles. That's it. All right. We'll do what we can, right? Do we have anything to say about the rents? I mean, because I know the rents were kind of low there. I know that. So we, we never have anything to say, say about the rents, right? No. All right. Number two, consideration of possible action to approve a three month extension to the planning option to 33 Investments LLC for 101 and 109 North Adams Street and 227 East Walnut Street, formerly known as the Shower and Schumacher Building. Great to see some activity there. Yes, our developers have been working diligently on getting all their quotes together. And if you remember, 109 North Adams is going to include, is proposed to include six market rate housing units located on floors two and three office suites on the first floor and a speakeasy type lounge in the basement. And then 227 East Walnut would be like a private event business, weddings, um, Christmas parties, things like that. They have met with several contractors and received their quotes. And now they're working with investors to get their um, financial um, package put together. So the developers are now um, asking for a three-month extension so that they can continue to work with um, their investors to secure their financing. Yeah, exciting. It it's exciting. It is. It's going very well. Near and dear to Matt's heart, I remember that. <laughs> um, the developer is here, um, Taylor. If there, if you guys did have any questions, you know where they're at, you know progress and stuff like that. But um, I, we see no problem with this. Questions, and, and, and Rhonda, for the three month planning option, what do they propose would be done during that time? And uh, at the end of that three months, what would then happen? There, I want to make sure we avoid perpetual planning option yes. extension. Yes. Yeah, like I said, they did get several contractors in and several um, bids. And when they were going through the bidding process, we had provided them with a map of um, measurements and stuff like that. The contractors that came in gave them a bid did find a little bit of difference in some of the measurements and stuff. So they kind of had to reroute back. So that took a little bit of time during the six months. But now at this point, they have those numbers together. And it's just a matter of um, they do have investors that are or private investors that are together that want to with the um, event business. And now they're working to work with banks, um, credits, their historical credits and things like that to put the whole performer together. And they're here. Yeah. It would be the staff's expectation yeah. that in three months we have a development. So, yes. It's not like you're close to it. Close to it. Um, other questions or comments? 
Otherwise, I, I don't see you. Okay. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion by Ellen and Scandal. Second. Second by Matt. Questions or comments? Additional questions or comments in regards to the motion? If not, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Thank you. I think it's exciting. Moving forward, yeah, that's number one. And we look forward to developing the agreement next time around. Uh, number three, consideration of possible action to improve the three months of the planning option for the property located at 929 North Broadway to Neighbor Works Green Bay. Okay, back in September, we awarded a six month planning option um, to a Neighbor Works a Green Bay for a three bedroom, two bath single family home that we acquired through City Surplus. Um, they have been working on their design and pro forma, and they have everything together. Um, they were, they're, they're meeting this month to go with their um, potential partner for the Adopt-A-Home program. Um, so because their planning option was set to expire today, <laughs> um, they're asking for a three-month extension. And that's just, we're probably going to come back with this for a development agreement next month, but we did put it at the three months so that they can meet with the investor and go over with it with their final right. numbers. Yeah, they, they've got a big design already. Right? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Moving right along. Uh, questions, comments? No, so just kind of in the same vein. So around a three months extension, we're thinking at that, we will be in a development. Yes. Okay. Motion to approve. David from NeighborWorks is here also, if you guys have any questions regarding that yeah. timeline. I like well. the design. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Second. Second by Kathy. <laughs> um, questions or comments in regard to the motion? If not, all the favorite will simply say aye. 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 Motion carried. Look forward to seeing you next month. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, number four. We're meeting when you're not here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, they're making things happen, right? Yeah, that's right. right. Number four. Consideration of possible action to approve a three month extension of the planning option for RDO owned property to both Fourth Street, parcel 2 176, 2 177, 2 178, and 2 178 A to NeighborWorks Green Bay. Uh, that's me again. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of the same situation that we had with the last one. This is a, a larger development. They're looking at doing 11 townhome units on um, 4th Street block and three of the units would be set aside for buyers and then 80% um, median income. They've been working with their site plans, building designs and pro forma. This is the month that they're meeting, um, bringing everything to their asset management committee and board of directors to further discuss the final project and get it approved. But that wasn't gonna be until later this December and their um, planning action expired December 30th. So we felt that we should bring it get the extension so that they didn't run out. And then they'll, I anticipate they'll be coming forward in the next month or so with the um, development agreement. Okay. And I noticed enough time to make a comment on this, but we're looking at, at the design. They all look the same. I, I assume they're, they aren't the same. Uh, we should open the floor. Yeah. Motion open the floor. Second. All in favor, same with the guy. Aye. Aye. Sure. Uh, we do anticipate having some uh, variety along the front elevation there, like you mentioned, similar to our project over here on 437 or on Jackson Street. Yeah. Navarino townhomes will be similar in size and scale and material, but we'll change it up. But, but, but variety in the project. Variety for sure. And actually, uh, just real quick. Uh, yeah, please. The timeline Rhonda laid out uh, is, is accurate. And actually, we're meeting with our builder partner tomorrow. Oh, so by we tomorrow, we should have. Some good answers, and then uh, we'll have our asset management committee on the twenty first, and then we'll have our January board of directors meeting at for neighbor works to hopefully push it along. Like well, said. Thanks for taking a moment. Sure. We're trying. Uh, questions? Oh, for, motion to close. <clears throat> yeah, I think this year questions are coming for neighbor works. If not, motion to going back to regular business. Yeah. Second. Second motion and a second to go back to regular business. All the leaders are saying aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed, so no uh, a motion uh, in regard to the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Second by Debbie. All in this panel, second by Debbie. Uh, questions or comments regarding the motion? If not, all the leaders are saying aye. 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 
Excellent. Motion carried. Thank you. Number six. Thank you. Consideration of factual action to approve a one year whole harmless agreement with On Broadway Inc. for the site located at 164 North Broadway to be used for community events. I'll take this one also. <laughs> okay, so On Broadway Inc. in the past, in the last year has used 164 North Broadway. That's right on the corner. It's right where the red sculpture is, um, right in the middle of their um, Wednesday farmer's market. And so they're asking if they can continue that one year um, hold harmless agreement for that site so they can continue to use it for the farmer's market, Chris Kendall market, um, the extravaganza, the art pop, uh, the pop up art installations and things that they have there. They do such a great job and been such a big hit. So um, staff is recommending that we do approve the one year hold harmless agreement. Um, we don't have a 30 day agreement with them. We're, we're um, um, we have a developer or, or for whatever reason they, they want out. Yes, we do have a 30 day okay well, written. Well, yep. Well, mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Um, that seems smart to me. I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Kathy. Second. <laughs> motion by Kathy. Second by Ms. Kendall. Questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Well, we're good. Very good. Nice long agenda, please. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great words, everybody. Consideration of possible action request for proposal 2023-52, selection of environmental consultants for the issue of Mountain Grant. We take that one. Um, so recently, the city of Green Bay was awarded $500,000 from EPA for an assessment grant. This is a program you know, we have for many, many years. Um, it's what we use to uh, conduct phase one and phase two environmental site assessments with. We've done a lot of remedial action planning with these dollars on both RDA owned lots and private properties that we're trying to facilitate cleanup and redevelopment on. Um, when we do receive these grants, we need to go out for RFP to select consultants. Um, so we did that using the city's procurement, or I'm sorry, purchasing division. Um, we went through that process. We received seven uh, proposals from the firms. Um, we scored each one. It was it was pretty tight, but um, staff is recommending we proceed with Stantec. They're the ones that scored the highest. Um, we have used them in the past and have been very pleased with uh, the services that they provided. Fantastic, yeah. What a lot of interest. We have seven, seven different organizations we've uh, been on. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, questions or comments? Is your dark board part of this process? Very <laughs> <Dark board. laughs> <Dark board. laughs> Very good. Motion to approve. Motion by Eleanor Scanlon. Second. Second. Uh, Matt, uh, Kathy. Alderman Matt, Scanlon. It doesn't matter, Kathy. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Alderman Scanlon, I made the motion. Uh, Kathy seconded. Yep. Comments? If not, all those in favor of the motion, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. Aye. Thank you. Yeah. Next one, too, huh? Number eight, consideration of possible action request for proposal 20 23 42 selection of an environmental consultant for EP Brownfield's cleanup grants. Yeah, so very similarly, um, this is a $1 million <laughs> uh, Excuse me. The redevelopment authority. Um, and this is specific to the remediation of our battery sheet metal property on South Broadway. Yes. Um, so we received those funds. We went through the procurement process to select the consultants. Um, we had two proposals for this. Um, and we scored. Uh, again, Stantec was the highest scoring uh, vendor. Um, so we are recommending we proceed with a contract with Stantec uh, to conduct that work at battery sheet metal. Questions, comments? In motion. Motion to approve. Second. Candle and Debbie. Questions or comments? Motion, if not, all in favor, we say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, number 10. Consideration of the possible action to rescind the creation approval of a 30 foot easement on parcels 12 112 and parcels uh, parcels 12 195 to 12 206 
Description of construction of any permanent building structure by permitting emergency vehicle access, temporary also seating, temporary lighting, and temporary artwork previously approved by the RDA at the May 9th, 2023 meeting. So there is, we were looking to be sent, but we actually approved them in the United States. Yes. So, um, you know, we've been working um, with the developer on our site. We've been working with the developer on the adjacent site yep. moving forward. But going back to when this easement was originally approved at the RDA, and I went back and they watched the meeting again and looked through the notes. Um, I, I guess, in good conscience, didn't want to go forward until I came back to the RDA. Um, I think there were some things presented at the meeting that weren't totally accurate, mm -hmm. and that not accurate today. Um, just looking at some statements that were made, I it is my belief that, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, of course, but I believe the RDA believed that we were in need of this easement as much as the adjacent property owner yep. was. Yep. That was that's, specific that's, aspect, but, yep. but, yes, um, and that that is not true for the property. The easement was actually terminated. I don't know what year that was terminated. Um, both parties. Um, so you can look for it. Okay. It was mutual, it was mutual terminated to terminate for the easements. And I can't speak to what reason that was for um, at the time that they were terminated. So um, when this came to the RDA, I, mean, I think there was this understanding that for the future development for us yeah. that we would need this easement. That it, that's just not true. Okay. And so I, I guess what I'd like to see is this is your approval of this rescinded, not saying we're not going to come back with another agreement for an easement for, for development purposes. Um, we've been talking with the adjacent owners and with the developers, but even, I mean, we have great development team, development group we're working with on our site right now, yes. but I, I don't want to consider that. I want to consider the site forever in the future. Mm -hmm. So God forbid if something were to happen with this development, the next development, we will be trying to get another high level development on the site. So um, I think it's important that we cannot restrict ourselves or send that message out. Mm -hmm. We have the season out there. I don't think it was approved in the case right now. Right. So the original, the original, um, Easement was terminated in 2007. 2007. Okay. That was before I was born. I mean, uh, an older. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. A long time. Yes. And uh, I bet you, the new developer, new, the new developer, new, new land? New, new land, I'm sorry. That's got to be our number one consideration. It's a beautiful project. That's, you know, that's got to be number one. And, 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 and I know you know that. No. You know. Uh, you, these, we all think this is right. New Landing thinks this is the right thing to do. Base also thinks this is the right work. I can't speak for it. I, I okay. would think, um, no, I would think they probably would like to have, have that 30 foot easement okay. for help them on their development for their property. Okay. But I can't speak for that. Okay. Um, but you know, even when we went out for our PM site back in 2017 or 18, yeah, the proposals we had in high rise. Yeah, yeah. we've yeah. always wanted to have. Right. You know, this is a, an important yeah. spot downtown. We've always wanted to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. As dense of a development as we can. So, um, <clears throat> I, so I guess my, I would just like to yeah. rescind that. Yeah. But yeah. Not saying that at some future <laughs> point we we don't come back with another easement agreement if that was going to work out with the with the adjacent neighbors. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I don't think the thirty foot one is appropriate. You think we will need some kind of easement agreement? I would, I would think Some. we would. Okay. I see no reason. Cheryl, Cheryl, what you're saying basically is you just don't want us to limit ourselves, that we should keep the property open and take away this because at this point it's not needed based on how the property is right now. Yes. That yes, because I think the, the way that it was presented to you was the RDA. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I, I would agree. I remember the meeting well. Yeah. Um, so whatever, I mean... Okay. However, that was voted on. Okay. Yeah. Quick question. Uh, no, I'm, I'm. No, clearly, I remember uh, that meeting and the <laughs> and all that, and certainly all of it is very supportive of the same thing. Second. Uh, motion second to be shown as as stated. Um, questions or comments? Just we will continue to work with all parties. Um, and we didn't hear from uh, the other party. They, they obviously know. they are not in favor of recent. That's all they said. They, um, they sent an email. 
yes, they sent an email just expressing that they didn't think that um, uh, RDA really had the discretion or the authority to rescind, um, and they didn't think it was proper. Um, they felt that we should still collaboratively be working towards coming to some sort of alternative agreement before um, and any, any action on rescinding takes place. Um, as far as your ability to rescind, um, you have the ability to do so, so long as you haven't taken any action towards the item that you approved. And we haven't. The easement never got the uh, document or the actual easement document has never been executed. So it's really just the approval that's on the table. Um, and on the basis that, you know, you weren't given uh, accurate information or uh, wasn't presented it, with your, not necessarily with your best interest in mind, but basically not having a full scope of the picture. Yes. Um, that's a, a reasonable reason to be able to kind of walk it back, uh, wipe the slate clean, and then continue moving forward towards working towards um, something that's going to work for both. Parcel right. owners and right. work in both interests. Right. And we are working for both. Yes, we will continue to work. Correct. So and I, that's all been expressed right. to, yeah. to the parties. Okay. Yeah. And everything you said is true. And secondly, our you know, one concern is new, new land. I mean, we have an exterior, that's a beautiful, unbelievable project. Um, we have a motion and a second, I believe. Yep. Uh, yes. I don't, uh, Randy and myself. Yep. Yep. A question or comments regarding the motion? If not, all those in favor signify the nine. Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Thank you. Very good. A very good active agenda it means we're going to work very hard. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Um, I had a couple questions on the, on the finance report, but they've been answered. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions in regard to the finance report? Okay. Um, director's report and update. So um, I have to report out that we had some emergency repairs that needed to happen at the KICC with regards to our unique units. Mm -hmm. So I authorized the OSU's 32,498 to get those replaced um, if they needed heat. So good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a they get hit you know, in case of that. Winter yes, <laughs> Um, and then also wanted to let you know that um, we continue to work for the JBS project. We are going actually tomorrow to um, the village of Bellevue. We're working to a planning new development with the land through Bellevue, with, through Bellevue on behalf of the RDA. So we're moving forward with that uh, project as well. And then, Matt, do you want to talk about the R5 for graduate shoot level? Um, sure. So um, you may recall we had previously um, been in discussions with the developer for the development of battery sheet metal. Um, unfortunately, those aren't um, so speeding. Um, we would like to um, move forward with a request for information uh, to identify a new partner to facilitate the redevelopment of that site. Um, we're considering possibly um, working with somebody to do a mixed use project a little bit differently than what was initially envisioned. Um, we'd like to explore the idea of possibly doing a fire station on the main level mm -hmm. um, with multifamily housing above. Oh, well, that'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, something that we're just exploring at this point. Sure. This RFI would give us that ability to that integrate the conversation <laughs> and, and maybe put something together. So we'd come back to this body in the future um, if if we are able to pursue. And is that a, a new? Is it Obviously, it wouldn't be a new fire station, but is it a replace or is it a M plus one as far as fire stations go? Yeah, that replaces one and two. Uh, one, one and three. three. One and three. One. Yeah, so one is just fire administration. Okay. And then three is the uh, our oldest station, which will be around Shano Avenue. Okay. Um, so we consolidate those two to have one a little bit more centrally located. Correct. It should be. Okay. Three is in really bad shape. Mm -hmm. That's a natural yeah. spring in the basement. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Sell fire department bottom uh, walk <laughs> that natural spring, right? Who wouldn't want that? I think they thought that was an indoor swimming pool. Wow. It's too bad. Anything else you want to report? No, unless you have questions. Well, I, 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 did, did, yeah, you know, did, did, I sure was going to ask you about this. <laughs> I don't know what you knew about it. The building code. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I certainly would like to see something in our building code so we couldn't run into a situation again where we have apartments for outlanders. And, and mm -hmm. so, anyway, you, I, 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 
I don't mean for you to have an answer right now, but sure. I, I, I certainly would like to see that we can never get into that situation. Right, right. So anyway, you guys are going to talk, talk yes. through that. I'm sure, I'm sure, sure. Maybe they have a chance to talk through that. You had mentioned you were going to. It's on my list. We have a long list. list. Oh, yes. I'm sure you do. <laughs> the, the other thing, this is something Matt brought to my attention several times, um, and I want to give him the credit for this, but the you know, public service property is a prime property, East River on one side, Fox River on the other side. Yeah. And if we could really do a long range plan for what we really feel should be on that property, and again, Matt, it this is Matt's idea, he's absolutely so I don't want to give him the credit that'd be um but that'd be great. It means he's got regard reservations that it might be a bad idea. No, but you know, that's <laughs> such a beautiful reason. And Jeff, you could talk to us as well, just a beautiful piece of property and what we really want to see on that property. You know what the, ideally would so anyway. I don't know how we can do a long range plan map or whatever, well, but should that be part of our downtown plan? It's well, downtown. Yeah, I mean, I, and I was going to say that yeah, we please. agree totally from the administration's point of view. Um, Alda Johnson put in a communication oh. uh, quite a while ago on um, developing a plan for our waterfront, which is obviously relevant yes, 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 yes. for the discussion here. Um, you know, there's a possibility that the land just to the north but across the yes. river yeah. 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 Would, would come up for development too. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of wisdom and that we have a comprehensive plan planning process that's underway right now um, okay so i think there's opportunity to uh, to include okay. that discussion within the broader um comp plan discussion as well but um but yeah i agree that'd be great because i just think back to right authenticity and we did that and that's now in 15 years or somewhere now yeah. and right would have never envisioned at that time that those two parts of yeah. you know, mm -hmm. each side of the right. East River where right. yeah. the box that yeah. become right. potentially right. the acreage is Something huge, else. right? How central that is. It's just the opportunity to then become ooh, we gotta really think about it. Right. We want to have absolutely and I think it's a good idea to take a more comprehensive view that the whole waterfront instead of doing it be piecemeal. Right. Get right. A plan of how we good point. Very good waterfront. Point. So we all oh. so that would be better if uh, Cheryl can yeah. Like when we have some planners and everyone <laughs> right, that like that stuff. Right? You know, we've had internal conversations about what we'd like to meet up here and to put some concepts together yeah. um, with higher densities, of Good. course, and you know, down the house. But um, anything formal, um, yeah, we haven't okay. done yet. But right. it's, it's just a really, yeah, it's right. It's a really unique opportunity. It think is. about the work that has been done in the last yeah. 15, 20 years along the block. Front and now other things that are opening up and have occurred, you know, some that are just luck, you know, as well. Um, but boy, I just you think about the opportunity to create for everything, city leveraging the waterfront of those properties, you know, things that I'm sure the public would love to comment on. Um, we're on the horn, Jeff. Please, any, any updates? Sure. I would like to just start off by thanking the RDA for the work that you do throughout the year because it does serve as a catalyst and uh, it really helps energize the entrepreneurial community. So the incentives and the support does make a difference. And I see frequently the impact when uh, private businesses are interested in the downtown area. A few just to mention, a uh, few things that are happening. We're very pleased that in the first quarter of 24, we will see two new restaurants coming to the heart of downtown on Washington Street. Uh, there was a transfer of ownership of the former Fox Heights building, a very beautiful property uh, in excellent condition. New owner uh, developing their plan should be opening in a few months or so. Don't hold me to any dates, but uh, met with that entrepreneur, great plan and excitement. Um, you know, a lot of these businesses are influenced and you know, excited about the notoriety that Green Bay is getting in the national spotlight uh, with the draft, et cetera. So, uh, you know, that's a change of ownership and someone committed to owning a property and hiring people in the heart of the downtown. Uh, Let's quick shop. Real quick. What is Fox Heights? Oh, some may remember it, old guys like you, and uh, <laughs> it used to be Oxford's. You know, so remember Oxford's? Okay, great. That building, beautiful property, three levels, and the, and the building is in beautiful condition. So, uh, and they landed the right owner for that space. I just met them recently. Uh, a shout out to um, James Fang, the China Palace. James operated a business in our downtown for 28 years. 
and uh, he has decided to take on some other uh, goals of his, and so he will be open until the end of the year. I'm pleased to say that you know that there's a, a lease signed on the property. We will see another restaurant here and some new recipes and uh, ethnic cuisine coming to that building. So stay tuned. You know we will announce with that property uh, with with that operation when they're when they're open and we met with them. They're excited about also being downtown. But you know to, to James, I've been working with him for many years. Still last week to see him out sweeping the sidewalk of his shop after 28 years of running a restaurant in downtown. Took a lot of pride, um, a great supporter of downtown. Uh, and he, he shared with me some of his favorite memories when Dine on the Deck was on the city deck and the customer uh, connections that he had. So uh, feel free to stop in, wish him well. Uh, Tonight, thanks to the Parks Department, Winter Wonderland in Whitney uh, in partnership with the Old Main Street Group uh, will uh, Whitney Park is going to come alive with activities. So from 5.30 to 7 tonight, come on out and uh, a lot of fun activities for the family. It's a beautiful neighborhood. There are a lot of residents in that neighborhood over the past five years. And uh, so they have a beautiful park uh, to enjoy this winter, thanks to the Parks Department. Uh, we also have a new installation that was assembled on the city deck. Um, a beautiful arch right in front of the creamery and broken yeah. spoke. So yeah. be sure to check that out. But I'm very pleased with the way the city deck was decked out for the for the holidays. Uh, be sure to check check that out and take your family Christmas picture there. Uh, we had a public art piece that was unveiled, the Cherry Round, and um, the beauty of that piece. And it was great to have uh, the mayor and others. Uh, we partnered with the city on that and. There were, whenever you drive past that public art piece, it's called the Spirit of the Fox, and it is a clay mural, and it was crafted, it was a community art piece. So 900 local artists, creators, attending Art Fest Green Bay, uh, helped shape that mold of clay. We worked with some awesome local clay artists, and that was installed recently. It is a beautiful addition on the walnut side. Is that that's up now then? Walnut side of the cherry ramp. Yeah. Okay. We must have forgot to invite you to the unveiling. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just really, really pleased with progress and the energy. So just wanted to say thank you for your work well, and uh, it's yeah, making a difference. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks Leah, please. Um, I see there's still a flyer here. I have some in my car, but the market again is the first, third, and fifth Saturdays. It's going strong. Um, we are working with Discover Green Bay with the draft. Um, being in our location, we have lots of good assets to be able to share with them. I'm anxious to talk to the mayor about his conversations with, with Kansas City. Um, and Yes, that's about it. Kind of wrapping up the end of the year. Challenge. Was that this morning's TV yesterday morning? You're saying you're on military or change some zoning or something? Or what was that about? Yeah, Brooks, Brooks at Leadership Green Bay today. Okay. Alderman Johnson. You better leave then, Brian. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything you want to report? On, on the only thing I would I would point out because it directly ties back to the uh, the extension of the use of 164 North Broadway is that the Chris Kindle market does go through Christmas. Uh, it is every Friday night from five to nine and Saturdays from 11 to three. We've seen a couple thousand people every day that it's been open. It's been just a, a phenomenal success with the addition of the uh, the wooden chalet. So if you have not been, please come on out. Yeah, we'd love to see you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments uh, for the mayor or, or staff or by our group? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn it. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All the people saying aye. Aye. Aye.
Motion carried. Next meeting is January 9th at 1 30. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you.